Hello everybody, Nerd in Texas. We're working on getting everything edited and put together from the trip recently. And here is part two. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hello everybody, Nerd in Texoma, back at the second filming location up in Flippin, Arkansas. Yes, that's a real town. Google it if you don't believe me. Um, this is our second filming location. Like I said, uh, it's got some sets that were not in the uh, Harrison location. Bad thing is, 
they're not air conditioned. <laughs> you know, being in the south in September or really any time after March is kind of hot. So trying to stay in the shade in a cool area in between takes and uh, we'll see what we can uh, film inside maybe get a little bit of behind the scenes footage stay hydrated. yeah definitely <laughs> stay hydrated like Greg said because it's a booger out here <laughs> all right see you in the next bit Hello everybody, it's Nerd in Texoma, back with another follow-up about 8.10, 8.05-ish on Sunday night. I'm making the trip back home now. Uh, stopped in Fayetteville to get something to eat and be able to take my leg off because being in a car and being kind of bound up is a little achy and I don't think I've ever showed y'all how I drive with my leg on so uh, I'm not going to do that now because I've already got it off but <laughs> I'll try to remember to put that in another video um, yeah I decided to hang out a little late in the day because uh, Sean and Christina were staying in town up in Harrison and they were also staying at the Hotel Seville that I stayed with Greg and <clears throat> neither of them had a car or anything like that didn't rent a car so I was like meh I wisely requested off for Friday and Monday so I knew if I, if something came up, I could hang out a little extra on Sunday, and that's what I did. Hung out with them until about 4.30, 5 o'clock, and then I was like, all right, I think I need to start heading home. <laughs> It'll be about midnight or so when I get home, so yeah, I think I'll head out about now. <laughs> But it was great sitting around and bullshitting with them all day and coming up with ideas for future fan films, possibly, or ways to add to fan films and just different craziness that we had. You know, it's when it's done right, the fan film community is like a family and with no budget productions with everybody that works with them and works with Vance they do it right you know real life comes up you know some people might not be able to make it because of car problems or you know they have no time off from work or they have phone problems and can't record something at home and submit it into Vance, you know, whatever. Real life happens, but Vance figures out a way to work around it. If you want to be in a fan film, he will make sure you get something, some role somewhere in a fan film. And I just think that's great. I think it's awesome. You know, like Sean and Christina, I've talked to Sean... You know, I've acted with him in scenes in different Constar films, but I've never met him in person. You know, I've talked to him online, but, you know, it's like, hey, you send him a message. All right, you know, what do you think about this? What's going on here? And it's different actually talking to a person live, in person, you know, sitting two feet away from you across the table and stuff like that. And, I mean, I got to do that this weekend. That is cool. I've never met Christina in my life, either online or in person, until this weekend. Talked to her in person. 
it's great you know the the people involved with no budget production fan films I mean even if you've never met them in your life the second you meet them they're basically like an extended family and it's amazing Greg Greg Teft you know he's helped me so much throughout the years with the fan films Vance I can't say enough of how he's helped me throughout the years you know Frank Parker all the rest of them I mean there's there's so many I can't name them all I'm sorry it's not disrespect it's just oh my gosh it's so many so yeah like I said I'm just checking in on a little trip back home I believe Google Maps said it was still got about three and a half hour to four hour drive. Yeah, it's going to be about midnight or a little after when I get home. <laughs> but it's been a fun weekend. It's been awesome. I can't say enough about it. And I will do a little check-in video later on if I have to make a pit stop or get some gas do a video for that do a video when I get home and then edit all this together and make something presentable <laughs> all right see y'all in a bit all right everybody hello nerd in Texoma back with the uh final video part of my trip to Warp 66 Studios and up in northern Arkansas. As you can see, I'm back home now. I'm back in my normal filming location. <laughs> I've gotten permission to share some pictures from the sets, as long as they don't give anything away, really, that is a top secret, you know, for the Constar the Motion Picture. That stuff, you'll have to wait until Constar the Motion Picture is released, which, if I remember correctly, is going to be around December 8th. So, you get a little teaser now and get the film. And then you get the Nerd in Texoma behind the scenes. Uh, Sean Reimer did a lot of behind the scenes. You know, I'm I'm sure there's going to be uh, golly, at least five different behind the scenes videos. Uh, Jefferson Kelly did some interviews with each of us. You know, after we filmed a few scenes and stuff and were able to sit down with him for a few minutes. So there's the Q&A on that. Other people I know uh, filmed and took some pictures. They're not going to do like a behind the scenes video. But, you know, <clears throat> I'm sure they'll be posted on Facebook when it comes out. I mean, there's just a lot of content that's coming up. <laughs> but I did get special permission to explain something that I put in the film personally for my character. And I'm going to get a picture of it over here. Have to do that in editing with my app and stuff. Uh, you'll see... In the picture or pictures when they come up that I am wearing a t-shirt and this is actually part of the film a little teaser but it also is a bit of backstory for my character 
and me personally. Uh, as a lot of you know, about four years ago, I had to get a leg amputated. And if you keep up with the uh, Constar series, my character of Kevin Ruiz has a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Vance's character of Eric Menard, to where my character uh, kind of resented him for leaving him behind to die on a planet. So yeah, my character came back and was like, eh, screw you and screw your ship. And ended up crashing the Constar. <sighs> Long story, go back and watch the films, you know, go back and watch Constar Review. We'll eventually get to them and, you know, get in more <laughs> detail about all that. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, I personally made a short film with my girlfriend at the time who helped me in her backyard and everything. Kind of wrote it, introducing my personal life into the life of Kevin Reeves because, I mean, it makes a more believable story if you live through it, if it's something that you have a personal connection to. It makes it a lot easier to deal with. So the backstory on that was that I got stuck on a planet and there's, you know, some storm coming in and trying to, you know, observe the native species, native people there and stuff like that and their planet had uh, I guess kind of like an earthquake type of thing and I was walking and my leg got stuck in there and Captain Menard at the time said hey you know we can't do anything we can't risk being seen by these people you know I'm sorry but you're gonna have to leave him and in that film, I asked another character, hey, don't leave me, don't let me die. Phaser off my leg to be able to beam me up. And they did and all that. I've got it filmed. I need to get it edited. One day it will come out. <laughs> but fast forward to... Constar the motion picture, and in every scene, or just about every scene, I think, you'll see me wearing a red t-shirt with a ship logo on it. Now, we've seen crew t-shirts before in, like, Lower Decks, we've seen it in Discovery, I think we've seen some of them on, uh... The Titan in Picard. And usually it's just the name of the ship or an abbreviation of the name of the ship on that. This is actually the ship's name, the registry, all that, and then it's got an image of the ship in a circular pattern and all that. That t shirt is from the first Star Trek fan club. I ever joined back when I was 14. Yes, I still have the t-shirt. It's, you know, a memento of my past. I don't wear it often or ever really, but it still fits. It's a fan club based out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, they used to meet at a place called Crystal's Pizza. In Irving and it's the USS Joshua NCC 3700 
And I think, I think officially the name of the class of ship or a variant of it would be the Saladin, where it's a uh, saucer section and it drops down to one warp nacelle. There's no secondary hull or anything. It's just saucer, engine, go. But this is an Excelsior class version of it. So, it's kind of unique, and I was like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to talk with Vance and see if he'll let me add to my character a little bit, and he said, yeah. <laughs> so I wore the shirt in honor of the fan club, and there's a line in the fan film that you'll see when Constar the Motion Picture is released that I say something to the extent of it took a month for Captain Bunton to program this hollow leg for me. Probably nobody will recognize this and I will attempt to get hold of the Joshua fan page on Facebook and stuff like that. Let them know to look for this. <clears throat> because when I joined the fan group, that was who was running it. A guy named John Bunton. And he was the captain of the Starship Joshua. You know, he just organized the uh, get-togethers and everything like that and <clears throat> I had recently found out that in 08 he died from cancer and he and everybody involved with the Joshua at the time were actually the ones who, I guess, started the fan film spark in me. Now, we're talking, this is early 90s, so bear with me for a bit. <laughs> I was 14, I was probably within two or three inches in height from where I am now. So, that was like, wow, okay. And they had an idea for a Star Trek Next Generation comedy play to be put on at an upcoming Star Trek and fantasy and sci-fi convention. And one of the guests that would be in the audience watching this play was Majel Barrett. Yes. Luoxana Troy. Yes. Wife of Gene Roddenberry. And I was like, wow. Well, this was a next-gen comedy play, and they had every other cast, you know, picked out and everything like that. Who's going to be the Deanna Troy? Who's going to be the Data? Who's going to be the Riker? Who's going to be the Picard? They didn't quite have anybody in mind to be the Worf character. And then I joined the group. And they're like, tall dude, Worf. You want to be Worf in the play? And, yeah. <laughs> I joined the cast for the play at, uh, oh gosh, what was it? Galaxy Fair 91. And I was Worf. Had the whole Klingon head ridges, 
went through makeup. It was about an hour to get into that. I couldn't grow a beard at the time because I was only 14, so I had like two hairs and yeah. <laughs> but uh, went through makeup, actually, you know, painted my face, changed my skin color and stuff like that. They didn't do the hands, so anybody that's looking would be like, hey, you know, Worf. Yeah, he touches the panels, you know, because they didn't want the makeup getting all over the panels and all the set and everything like that. And they actually professionally filmed it. We had a uh, film crew from Channel 21 in Dallas area. Uh... Back in the 90s, Channel 21 showed all the Star Trek series, you know, as they aired. And we had some friends and connections in that that let us borrow some of the camcorders, because back then everything was on film, actually, and not digital. But let us borrow some of the TV station's stuff to actually film the play. Unfortunately, throughout a lot of negotiations and stuff like that, those tapes got misplaced. Probably got recorded over, because, I mean, we're talking now, this is 30-plus years ago. I used to have a VHS that somebody recorded, because we did the... Uh, play on Saturday and then we did it on Sunday live in front of everybody at the convention so yeah <laughs> and somebody like I said somebody recorded it live one of those days I can't remember which and I had a videotape of that unfortunately with all the moves and everything I've had in the intervening 30-something years, I don't know where that videotape is anymore. So, if anybody knows anybody, if anybody can find it, if anybody comes across some information about it, it's called Silence of the Romulans. And it is a parody Star Trek play, but like I said, that kind of opened the door for fan films for me. And then, you know, years later, I met Vance and I met the whole no budget production team. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> But yeah, I met Vance and the whole no-budget production team got involved in actual fan films. So, I just wanted to talk with Vance and check with him. <coughs> and make sure... That it would be alright, first off, to do that, but honor the memory of John Bunton. Because he's the one that started, I guess you could say, really started me on fan films in general. I mean, back before there was a such thing as fan films. I mean... Back before, back in the 90s, there was no such thing as YouTube and all of that. It's just a bunch of us ding-dongs from a local fan club that got together and did a play at a convention two days in a row. But that got me started. I'll try and see if... I can find a picture of me as Worf 
and put it up over here. I found it a while back, a couple years ago. I'm not sure if I've ever got it online or on this phone or anything like that, but uh, I'll look for it. I'll see if I can find it, but yeah, just for those uh, eagle-eyed viewers out there who are like, man, heck is that dude wearing a t-shirt from a ship that's not even mentioned in the Constar universe or anything like that, you know, what, what the heck is that dude doing? As a little teaser to get y'all interested in the film a little bit more. Like that, it's a little personal touch that I wanted to do, that Vance gave me permission to do. That I got to add into the film and add to the character of Ruiz by kind of adapting some of my personal life in there. So, watch for that when it comes out. I apologize that this is going to be a hell of a long ass video. I don't know if I'm going to break it up into two parts or not. But yeah, some scenes, some parts have a long time with them. <laughs> But, uh, I hope y'all enjoy it. I hope y'all, you know, like seeing the hotel, like seeing part of the, uh, sets and a little bit of behind-the-scenes tomfoolery that we all do when we get together for the fan films. Uh, got to, it was great to be back with old friends <clears throat> And we totally met some new friends at the same time. I actually met them in person. You know, because these are people that I've interacted with, you know, on video for years. But it's always something special. It's always something different when you're actually sitting across the table and you can actually go up and go, uh... real you're a real person I can tap you on the shoulder you know it's it's definitely different when you get to do that but hopefully y'all are interested in seeing Constar the motion picture like I said it'll be on YouTube in December as long as there's no editing glitches or anything like that but hey if there are I'll keep you updated as to exactly when it's released and I will see y'all in the next video like I said I don't know if I'm gonna keep this as one long you know 40 45 50 minute video or if I'm gonna split it into two parts of you know about 20 minutes each I think that might be a little easier to digest so whichever one I decide to do I'll see you in that one <laughs> all right take it easy bye